Hi, my name is Chase Ballard. I'm Section's Lead AI Consultant. Today, I want to show you how to use ChatGPT to assess your email campaign performance and then improve the content of the quality of your upcoming campaigns based on historical performance. So one of the challenges that I have is I write a strategy brief newsletter each month that talks about a specific AI topic and the strategy about how you can implement it or what's going on in the world of AI. One of the challenges that I have is we have a lot of data on user sessions, unsubscribes, and revenue that gets generated from this email content. But I really wanted to do a deep dive on what makes a certain email campaign more performant than another. So what I'm going to show you today is how to load in your email campaign performance metrics, decide which of those campaigns you want to key in on as top performers and lower performers, and then we're going to actually load in some of the content, have ChatGPT analyze it, and then see how we can improve it going forward, and what some of the differences are between a top performing piece of email content and then a lower performing piece. What I've done here is I've actually loaded the campaign performance information into a Google Sheet that I'm going to ask ChatGPT to reference. So you can link ChatGPT to an app like Microsoft OneDrive or Google Drive or simply upload this content as a CSV into ChatGPT to start to do the analysis. I'm going to simply add this from Google Drive, but you can easily upload this from your computer. So I'm going to click Add from Google Drive. I'm just going to search here for campaign performance, and this should have my spreadsheet that I want to analyze. So this most recent one, I'm going to click on and select it and actually load it into the chat here. So it's going out and pulling the information from the Google Sheet and actually bringing it into the context of this chat. So the first thing I'm going to do is say, what is this data about? So I want to make sure it's got all the relevant content here. So I can see it's loading in the date, the campaign, how many people we sent it to, our open rate, number of clicks, unsubscribe rate, the revenue, sales, and a bunch of other metrics that are important for us. What it's doing now is writing some Python code to analyze this data. I just want to make sure that it has access to the data and it's not making anything up or hallucinating. So it's basically telling me this data helps analyze the effectiveness of different campaigns and then tracks KPIs. Let's do the first thing and filter this. So let's filter by strategy brief. So I want to trim down the content because we, we send a lot of campaigns out. So I want to filter it to the ones that I'm interested in. And so here it's writing the code and it's actually done all the strategy briefs here. I can double check this and see the campaign names that these are all strategy briefs. So the first thing I want to do is identify the top performers by sessions and revenue. So it's going through and sorting and filtering all my strategy briefs and then giving me the top campaigns by session and then by revenue. And then I'm going to say select the lowest performing campaigns by the same metrics. So it's doing the same thing. It's looking at the lowest performing, sorting them by the sessions. So some we got zero and some we got revenue that was zero as well. So I'm actually going to load in some examples of this content. And I just want to give this the context that it needs in order to pull some relevant information for us. So I pulled in some of the top performing content here. I'm actually going to replace one of these. And we're just going to see what it does. I just really want to get this into the context, right? So it's basically giving me a little bit of feedback on the unhelpful responses and then custom GPT and a step-by-step -step process. And now here are the lowest performing. I'm going to pull these in as well. So pi. Pull one of these in, just getting it into the context. And here's where the rubber meets the road. Can you analyze the content and produce insights for what makes a piece top performing versus lower performing? What I'm expecting it to do is to analyze these pieces, bucket them, and say, 
what do the top performers do versus the lower performers? So the top performers, like the custom GPT, clearly outlines practical steps. And then the other one addresses common pain points. And the lower performer one is intriguing, but lacks a clear, compelling value proposition to the reader. And then it's breaking it down by actionable insights. So these have actionable insights. My top performing ones do. The lower performings are more observational and speculative, which is something that it's bucketed and categorized it to. And then we've got this concept of broad appeal versus niche focus, discussing some of the universal challenges in AI and the custom GPTs piece is super specific. The pie inflection, which focuses on a company and a particular incident, might not be of interest to the broader audience, which is probably pretty true. And then the engagement and speculative versus evidence-based content, and then the top summary. This is pretty good insight for me when I'm writing a new piece for the next month. One step I can go further is I can say, can you analyze the calls to action to see if there are any differences? So just a simple prompt to see on the revenue side, are there any differences in the pieces of content from a call to action perspective? So now it's going to actually go through and analyze the relevance, the urgency, the clarity, which are all things that we want in a high performing call to action. And both of these have it and the lower performing ones have a little bit less relevance, right? So it talks about industry challenges, but not directly appealing. There's a lack of specificity in the call to action. And then the urgency is pretty low. We're saying the course duration is 10 days, but lacks a sense of urgency where some of these others use phrases like just in time creates a sense of timeliness and encourages the reader to act quickly, you know, grab a seat for this eight week session that we're running. And then it just gives me the key differences. The top performers are relevant and they also talk about the challenges that are discussed, gives the reader a more likely chance to see value in it. Lower performer ones are not as tightly connected. And then it goes through each of these clarity and specificity, urgency and motivation, and then gives me a summary. So now if I wanted to, I could take this one step further and actually upload my next piece based on this information that I have in this chat and actually have it analyze the call to action, all of these key aspects that I found in top performing campaigns, and then actually ask it to give me feedback on how can I take this maybe lower performing email campaign that I have and turn it into a top performer. So you can see where you can take this from here. One of the things you're going to need to watch out for is when it's actually editing the content that you're uploading. If you go to that stage is you want to be careful, of course, of hallucinations, right? Is it making up information about the offer that we're giving in the call to action? So you want to go through and double check all those things as you're analyzing the content that it's outputting. But this is a great way to get started quickly on analyzing your top performing campaigns, your lower performing campaigns. You don't need a hundred campaigns to do this. You can do this with 10 or 20 different campaigns or even pieces of content in order to analyze this information.